Ever wonder what goes on in your brain when you're lost in thought? Turns out, there's a whole network hard at work, even when you're not actively engaged in a task. Enter the default mode network, a fascinating discovery made two decades ago that sparked a wave of research into how different regions of the brain communicate with each other. Sure, when you're hitting the gym or tackling a tough exam, specific areas of your brain light up with activity as they handle the task at hand. But what about those moments when you're simply lounging on the couch, lost in daydreams? Well, researchers have uncovered that your brain doesn't exactly clock out during those times. Instead, they've identified the default mode network, a network of brain regions that spring into action when you're not actively focused on anything in particular. This revelation has shed light on how our brains operate when we're not engaged in specific tasks and has opened up new avenues for exploring the complexities of our internal experiences. Back in the late 20th century, neuroscientists began using advanced imaging techniques to peek into people's brains while they performed various tasks. What they found surprised them. While certain brain areas lit up during tasks, others seemed to quiet down. It was as if these regions were taking a break during external focus, only to spring back into action during moments of mental wandering. As researchers delved deeper into these task-negative areas, they began to unravel their significance. Marcus Reichel, a neurologist from Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis, suspected that these regions played a crucial role in the resting mind. This led to questions about the baseline activity of the brain. In an intriguing experiment, participants were asked to simply let their minds wander while their brain activity was measured. What Rachel discovered was fascinating. During rest, when our thoughts turn inward, these task-negative areas consume more energy compared to the rest of the brain. In a landmark paper in 2001, he coined the term default mode of brain function to describe this phenomenon. Two years later, with the aid of more advanced imaging techniques, researchers from Stanford University School of Medicine identified a network of interacting brain regions associated with this task-negative activity, which they named the default mode network. The revelation of the default mode network sparked a surge of curiosity among neuroscientists. While some hypothesized that its primary function was to facilitate mind-wandering or daydreaming, others speculated about its role in controlling streams of consciousness or accessing memories. Moreover, dysfunctions in this network were proposed as potential features of various psychiatric and neurological disorders, from depression to schizophrenia to Alzheimer's disease. However, over the past two decades, research into the default mode network has brought forth a more nuanced understanding. It's been fascinating to witness the diverse tasks and paradigms that engage the default mode network, remarked Lucina Udin, a neuroscientist from the University of California, Los Angeles. The default mode network stands as one of the pioneering brain networks decoded by science. It comprises several key regions scattered throughout the brain, including the dorsal and ventral medial prefrontal cortices, the posterior cingulate cortex, the preconeus, and the angular gyrus. These regions are linked to a range of cognitive functions, from memory and experience replay to prediction, action consideration, reward processing and information integration. Since its initial identification, neuroscientists have uncovered several other distinct networks, each activating seemingly unrelated brain regions. However, these activated areas don't operate in isolation. Rather, they synchronize and harmonize with each other, much like instruments in a symphony orchestra. As Marcus Rachel aptly puts it, individual parts of a brain network work together to produce effects they couldn't achieve alone. The default mode network's effects span a broad spectrum, encompassing mind-wandering, recalling past experiences, theory of mind, thinking about others' mental states, envisioning the future, and language processing. While these functions might appear disparate, Vinod Menon, director of the Stanford Cognitive and Systems Neuroscience Laboratory, suggests they might converge to construct an internal narrative. In this narrative, the default mode network aids in reflecting on one's identity in relation to others, recalling past experiences and weaving them into a coherent self-narrative. Clearly, 
the default mode network is engaged in a complex web of activities that defy simple categorization. As Lucina Uddin notes, it's unrealistic to think that one brain region or network performs just one function. The intricate interplay between various brain regions underscores the multifaceted nature of brain function and cognition. Odin's journey into investigating the default mode network stemmed from her fascination with self-recognition tasks, such as identifying one's own face or voice, which appeared to be linked to this network. However, in recent years, her focus has shifted towards understanding the interactions between different brain networks. Just as individual brain areas form networks, these networks engage in meaningful interactions with each other, offering deeper insights into brain function dynamics over time. Of particular interest to Udin is the interaction between the default mode network and the salience network, which plays a role in identifying the most relevant information in any given moment. Her research suggests that the salience network acts as a regulator, determining when to activate and deactivate the default mode network based on the perceived importance of external stimuli. Meanwhile, researchers have been investigating potential links between mental health disorders like depression and abnormalities in the default mode network. However, the findings thus far have been inconclusive. In individuals with depression, some studies suggest that nodes within the network may be overly connected, while others propose the opposite scenario, nodes failing to connect effectively. Furthermore, some research indicates that it's not the default mode network itself that's abnormal, but rather its interactions with other networks. These seemingly contradictory findings align with emerging understandings that depression may not be a single disorder, but rather a spectrum of conditions with overlapping symptoms and distinct underlying mechanisms. Menon has developed what he dubs the triple network theory, which suggests that abnormal interactions among the default mode network, the salience network, and a third network known as the frontoparietal network could contribute to various mental health disorders, spanning from schizophrenia and depression to anxiety, dementia, and autism. Typically, when individuals focus on external stimuli, the activity of the default mode network diminishes, while activity in the other two networks increases. However, Menon suspects that this intricate interplay might operate differently in individuals with psychiatric or developmental disorders. Deanna Barch, a researcher specializing in the neurobiology of mental illnesses at Washington University in St. Louis, finds the triple network theory intriguing. She believes that delving into how networks are wired differently in people with mental health disorders could unveil underlying mechanisms and pave the way for novel treatments. However, she emphasizes that understanding network interactions is just the beginning, not the ultimate solution in deciphering mental illness complexities. It's not an end point, she stresses. Indeed, the current comprehension of the default mode network represents only a stepping stone. Since its revelation, it has urged neuroscientists to transcend the conventional understanding of single brain regions' responsibilities and explore the profound impacts of interactions between brain networks. Moreover, it has fostered a deeper appreciation for the inward-focused activities of the mind, highlighting that even during moments of daydreaming or rest, our brains are tirelessly at work orchestrating our inner experiences. As we wrap up this exploration of the default mode network, Remember, our minds are constantly at work, even in moments of apparent stillness. If you found this journey through neuroscience as intriguing as we did, make sure to subscribe to our channel for more captivating insights. Don't forget to hit the like button and ring the notification bell to stay updated on our latest videos. Your support keeps us motivated to bring you more fascinating content. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.